Can we use software to EQ correct some really cheap, crappy headphones and make them sound as flat and as good as much more expensive mastering grade headphones? That'd be awesome, right? Well, in today's video, that's exactly what we're gonna find out. We'll be comparing four different headphones in this video, ranging from a measly 30 bucks all the way up to something that costs about $500. And I'll be giving you my thoughts on how the headphones sound right out of the box and also EQ corrected using software called Sonarworks. And if you're unfamiliar with Sonarworks, it's just software you can buy that runs on your computer and it will in real time correct the headphones so that they all have a really flat response. So in theory, it should be able to take all the imperfections of a cheap pair of headphones and make them sound as flat as a really, really nice expensive pair. I'll give you my thoughts on how I think each of these headphones sound and if they're usable for a home studio owner or someone that's trying to make their music sound really good. And I'll be comparing it to my current setup that I have here in my studio, which is using a pair of Genelec 8030Cs. I know how these things sound. This room is treated. So I think I have a good starting point to compare all the headphone quality to these speakers. So this is going to be something I think a lot of you are going to find super valuable. So stick with me to the end of this video. Now, if you're here because you're looking to pick up some new gear for your studio and you want some recommendations based on actual science and measurements, I put together a gear guide for you in the description that you can go and download. And I did a ton of research to put together this comprehensive list of cheap, mid-grade, and pro-grade audio gear that you can go and buy. So if that sounds interesting to you, definitely go and check that out and don't forget to grab your download. Okay, let's talk about headphones. So you might be wondering, why do I have this collection of seemingly random headphones that I'm going to be reviewing? And the answer is, is because I owned them all. <laughs> These are headphones that were recommended to me by a trusted friend or some raving reviews online. Now, I performed a lot of listening tests with all four of these pairs of headphones, and I found out that the Sennheiser HD 650s, hands down, were the best sounding pair that I owned right out of the box. They sounded the most similar to my current listening setup here in my studio, and so I'll be referencing all of the different headphones to those specific headphones. Now, I would describe the sound of these Sennheiser HD 650s as super clean, High fidelity, the low end is fully extended. The sonic image is wide open and laser focused. If you can afford a pair of these headphones, I really think anybody could professionally mix and master music using those. Now, if we take that a step further, we can also EQ correct these headphones using Sonarworks to make them even more flat. And what I found was that when you engage the EQ correction, the low end becomes even more extended. And then there's a nice little presence bump around 2K that helps to bring out some details in the vocals and maybe highlight some harsh areas that tend to build up when we're mixing and mastering music. Now, I don't think you necessarily need Sonarworks to get a professional sounding result out of those headphones, but it does help, especially if you're working in really bass heavy music like EDM or some rap or hip hop. All right, next up are my Biodynamic 880 Pros. These come in a price tag of about 250 bucks, but you can usually find them on sale for around 200. So those headphones were actually recommended to me in this book uh, called Mixing Secrets for the Small Studio by Mike Sr. So if you do any mixing, you should definitely check that book out because there's a lot of really good information and I'll put a link to that in the description. Now compared to the 650s, the Biodynamic 880s had a little bit of a hyped sound to them, especially in the vocal region. I couldn't really quite put my finger on it, but it definitely sounded colored to me. The stereo image felt fine. The low and extension felt pretty good on those headphones. It was just that upper mid range that just something felt wrong. And as soon as you flip on Sonarworks EQ correction for those headphones, all that weird harshness in that upper mid range got sucked out and the low end beautifully extended and it was like night and day. If you own a pair of these headphones, I cannot recommend enough that you check out Sonarworks EQ Correction because it makes those headphones extremely capable. The stereo image felt a little bit bigger and it felt like a massive upgrade to the quality of those headphones. Next up are my OG Sony 
MDR 7506s. These come in at about a hundred bucks. And these headphones have been around for a long, long time. And they've been a go-to for a lot of home studio owners. So I'm willing to bet you probably have heard of those. Now I will say they're not the best headphones I've ever heard. Um, they're certainly not flat, but they don't necessarily sound bad either. They have their own sound, right? The bass frequencies felt pretty solid, but again, there was this weird, unbalanced, mid, harsh, upper mid range. The imaging on the Sony 7506s is also noticeably worse than the Biodynamics or the Sennheiser, and it just felt blurry. It wasn't laser focused or crystal clear like the Sennheiser 650. It'd be really hard for me to point to where each instrument is in a mix if I was listening on those Sony MDR 7506s. And just like my experience with those other headphones, when you turn on Sonorworks correction, those headphones basically come to life. While those headphones still suffered from kind of a blurry sonic image, I feel like the bass was fully extended now, those harsh highs were more balanced, and I think they're now usable for mixing and mastering music if you're looking for a lower cost option. Again, the Biodynamic 880s and the Sennheiser 650s are on a, another level compared to the MDR 7506s, but you know what? For 100 bucks, I think with Sonarworks, I think you can do a pretty good job, especially if you're just starting out and just trying to get your feet wet with mixing and mastering. Okay, the moment of truth. How does this cheapo pair of sub $30 headphones compare to the others? This is the AKG K77. And if you look at these headphones, you just know that there were some corners cut. <laughs> Let's not worry about that because what matters is the sound, not how it looks. When I put these headphones on my head and played music, words cannot describe how big of a piece of shit these headphones are. And by the way, if you were in a band that I recorded like way back in the day and I made you wear these when we were tracking, I am so sorry. Okay, let's talk about these headphones. Um, hmm. How would I describe the image of, on these headphones? I would probably describe it like your music is like a ball, a dark, sad ball that had been spray painted and lit on fire several times. And someone said, oh man, that really sad ball is on fire, let's put it out. And so they took a fire blanket and then smothered the ball. That's how your music sounds. The frequency range on this is so limited. It sounds like there's a high pass and a low pass filter on it. Kind of like what I would do if I was mixing music and I wanted like a telephone effect. That's how your music sounds in these, except worse. These, these headphones are completely useless for anything relating to a studio. I suppose you could probably punish somebody by making them listen to their favorite music with these headphones over and over until they learn their lesson. But, and this surprised me, with Sonarworks, the sound is actually much wider and uh, dare I say, usable. <laughs> When I put the EQ correction on those headphones, I could tell that there was supposed to be some low end there, but those speakers and the drivers inside of the headphones just couldn't reproduce those low extended full frequencies like all the other headphones. And all the weird low mid problems that make the mix sound really small and dark and, and not very big all kind of unfolded and you're left with a more balanced sound, but it has this weird like hiss to it the entire time. That's pretty annoying and definitely there, but it's a huge leap forward to where they were out of the box. Now, something else that I usually don't care about very much is the build quality because I tend to take care of my stuff and I don't really throw these in backpacks and travel around the world and smash them into things and stuff like that. So. It's like the last thing I care about. And I'd rather save money than invest in a pair of headphones that can, you know, withstand a house collapsing on it or something. But these headphones in particular have something that the other headphones don't, and they have this weird elastic band. See this? Now, the problem with that is that anytime you go to position these headphones on your head, 
it doesn't really sit in the same spot over your ears every time. All these other headphones are very rigid and they lock in the place after you find the right setting. And even the Sony 7506s, they have numbers. You can see that. They have numbers so you can go back and make sure that the height is exactly the same so those ear cups are in the same spot in your head every time. Not the case here. So every time you throw these headphones on, they'll be slightly different in the sound changes every single time. And you think I'm crazy? Take a pair of headphones and just move them around a little bit when you listen to music. You'll hear how much the sound changes. So lesson for everyone here, make sure that if you have headphones like this, that you're really paying attention exactly where you place them on your head. And it's also good practice to do that even if you have higher quality headphones that are more locked in. Because positioning with headphones means a lot when it comes to mixing and mastering. All right, so let me summarize some of the thoughts that I had when I shot out all these different headphones with and without EQ correction. Number one, if you do not EQ correct your headphones currently, you are missing out. This is hands down the simplest, easiest way to dramatically improve the quality of your headphones in your listening environment so that your mixes will translate outside of your studio. In every single case with every headphone that I tried in this shootout, the EQ correction from Sonarworks helped. And the only pair of headphones that I found that you could probably get away with not necessarily EQ correcting were these Sennheiser HD 650s. They're super flat out of the box, but Sonarworks still adds that last five to 10% to the flatness of those headphones and really does something nice to the really, really sub frequencies near 20 and 30 Hertz. The second thing I noticed is there is a noticeable improvement to the sonic image as you go up in cost on these headphones. The worst clearly being this piece of junk, $29 K77 headphones by AKG. Those are only good for making people hate themselves. All the other ones were dramatically better. Now, Sonarworks did not necessarily improve the sonic image. I think that that comes from having a really good pair of drivers in the headphones and just good cup design and construction. So if you're hoping to have awesome improvements to your stereo image with Sonarworks, probably not going to happen. And don't just disregard the spatial resolution of headphones. It really does play a big role in you making your mixing and mastering and even the creative decisions of the song. So if you can, try to get the highest quality headphone you can and then perform the EQ correction. And I have a bunch of really good suggestions for headphones at different price points in that free downloadable guide that I have in the description. And those are all based on my experience and measurements so I know it's gonna sound good for you. My third point that's worth mentioning is that all these different headphones are slightly different styles from each other. So the Sennheiser 650s are an open back design which is known to have a little bit better spatial resolution. The Biodynamic 880s are semi-open, the 7506s by Sony are closed back, and nobody gives a sh about what the design of these are. I do wish I had a really expensive pair of closed back headphones that I could compare with the Sennheiser 650s, but I don't, sorry. If you have any good recommendations for good closed back headphones, drop them in the comments below. Now the fourth big point that I want to make from this video is that EQ correction with something like Sonarworks is not BS. It's actually a very useful tool that we can use to transform a not so great pair of headphones into something that's actually pretty usable. Now ultimately how far you can push that limit all comes down to the quality of the drivers of those headphones and also the research and the development of the design to improve the spatial image. That's not something that we're gonna be able to fix with EQ correction. So if you make music out of your home studio with headphones, stop what you're doing, go and buy Sonarworks, start using that correction, get used to the sound, and I bet your music's gonna translate so much better. But make sure that they have your headphones because they don't have every single headphone ever made, but they do have several hundreds, if not thousands at this point. For me personally, I find it hard to believe that you're gonna really find a big improvement in the quality of headphones above about a $500 price point that justifies the extra cost. I think those differences are more nuanced and more of a stylistic decision. And it might be something that makes you 
happy or inspired to mix and master music, and that's totally fine. But in terms of a bass quality, you're going to be totally fine around $200 if you buy a solid pair of headphones and then correct them using something like Sonarworks. Both of those are going to give you the ability to make professionally sounding music, and that decision basically comes down to your personal interests and how much money you have in your wallet. And just so you know, just in case you don't, uh, Sonarworks also can correct your studio monitors. So if you use both headphones and studio monitors like I do, check out their studio series software. They It even comes with like a microphone. I have links to all this stuff in the description, but that will EQ correct the acoustics of your room to help make it more flat. And I have a video on that right up here somewhere that you can check out so you can hear the differences yourself and make a decision if that's something you want to try. But I highly recommend that as well. All right, so let me know what headphones you are using to mix and master your music in your home studio and if you use some sort of correction to make them more flat or enhance them some way. And don't forget I have that comprehensive downloadable guide on the best value studio gear that's based on actual science and measurements. That link is in the description. It's yours, my gift to you, totally free. If you found this video eye-opening or helpful, I would really appreciate it if you share it with an online community like Facebook or Reddit. Helps to get the word out and share this good information to help people just make better sounding music without needing to spend a ton of money on unnecessary gear. Thank you so much for your time and attention today, and I hope to see you in another video.